I'd like to say grace before we eat. <laughs> Estimado El Jefe, I want to be the Jardinero Laureado of Iquique. I want to write my poems with water from a hose until the sand grows a fuzzy green beard. I want to be Christ-like and water the pigeons so they once again fly. And I also want to water the, your iron fences with their chained and locked gates so they don't get thirsty and take themselves down to the sea to rust. I want to water your cars so the cuidadores de autos have something to polish with their greasy rags. And I want to water your streets and sidewalks for your beautiful homeless dogs in their colorful, colorful sweaters to swim through to their mangy scraps. I will water your murals until they gargle and spout mermaids. I won't have to piss behind your bushes anymore. I will hold both hoses out in the open salt air and spray into your golden burst of sunshine like rainbows with the mystified eyes of women on either end. The rivulets, the rivulet scars down the face of Cerro Esmeralda will be the lines of my poems. The pages of my book break wave after wave along your shore, sinceramente. <laughs> the work that I'm going to be doing at the uh, Universidad Arturo Pratt in, Ar in Iquique is, is to create a language exchange between what we know through what we've lived and what we know through what we, what our instincts tell us. You know, everything, everything comes to us in translation. Um, what I've enjoyed about being at this table, what an honor, coming from the coal mines, is Everything that you've said will be able to be. I will be able to translate into poet, not just poetry, but into lessons for poetry, which I'm not. Sh it's, it's. I'm not sure what it is I teach, um, other than vision, and you've given me incredible. When I what get what's got lost what got lost talk about you or your or your finding what's been lost that's one of my jobs as a poet the language when I first contacted my guy up in uh, Iquique. And with enormous reverence for all of those who died during COVID, I was able to say to him, Hernan, I have some money saved up. Can you find me a reputable translator for my poems? He said, contact this person, who is the director of the languages program at the university, who said, hey, why don't we spend this semester with my students translating your poems? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. well, Fulbright didn't kick in. Um, my university, maybe yours also, has a reputation of going out on strike like the French anytime they feel like it. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> But it didn't matter. We're on Zoom, they're on strike, and this is now clandestino. 
This is like we're we're not we're in the catacombs, um, and we're not telling anybody that for two semesters we're translating my poems. Now, one of the brilliant ideas of the director is that, but I'm not sure my students can uh, can translate poetry if they don't know where poetry comes from and if they don't know how to write poetry themselves. So would you please spend a portion of this in the beginning portion of the semester having them write poetry. Fantastic, that's what I do. So we were doing poetry writing exercises for every two weeks, and every two weeks for a couple months. Um, it's like, okay, and, and homework assignments, writing. I said, but listen, write in your native language, right? You know, it's like you need to know where po poetry, Chile, the country of poets, uh, where, where it comes from in your own language, and then work, work into it your translation skills. So that was very beneficial. And for two semesters, all of last year, um, we met. And when I arrive, then my book will be out. Um, part of one of my interactive uh, uh, writing exercises has to do with creating something I call poem fusion, where we've spent some time writing various exercises. Uh, then we spend some time out of our constructed writing. We deconstruct because their experience is to be the writer. But in the process of discerning what are your best lines, what is the best thing you have to say out of all of the, your writing, to deconstruct your writing into lines that you've that you've discerned are your best, well, then, then you become your editor. So we take this, so now it's a, like, it's, you know, it is not a spectator sport. Poetry is interactive and it is full body, full contact. Um, what? Moving around, getting up, putting lines of our poems scattered across the wall. I mean, it's like, being a poet is one subversion, but writing on school walls. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of ways I got. Oh, I get really? to. Middle school. These these kids are um this this group is mi um, middle school. Maybe maybe these guys are ninth grade. I don't. Know. Um. So now we have a now we have a. A, a, a wall of floating lines from our poems, and now the fusion comes in to create to recreate our poem, our next poem, from the lines of everybody else's poems. Now, what's interesting here is when I, these kids, um, these are kids in Italy. I, I teach at the uh, uh, high school. In a science high school in Italy. Um, and um, these kids don't come from the, from the same towns. And they don't come from the same family backgrounds. And they don't, they don't, they, ha they have, you know, school is their shared experience. But when they speak across this wall, they're taking lines from each other's poems to recreate their new poems. Now, that creates a community. That creates a way of speaking across communities that brings them closer together into, um, into, the, into the performance experience. And the performances are multi-voice poetry performances um, that are staged in uh, in different in, in different ways, there's a lot of times the kids will be standing up on the uh, on the windowsill. They'll be hunkered underneath the chairs, under the tables, to create a, like a panorama. Uh, and um, 
the lines of each other's poems like jazz. We're playing the same phrases from the same language pool, but like jazz, we're never, we're never playing the same phrase the same way twice. And that creates a really interesting perspective with refrain, repetition, and uh, that comes from my fracking project. What moves in the dark behind your eyes without opening your eyes, right? Yeah, I don't know how anybody can see with their eyes open. No one can write until seeing or visualizing an event or image that triggers a thought. For schools whose language curriculum not only teaches vision but encourages it. There's a, there's a book that I've written and it has been published, but they won't be, uh, called Writing the Classroom Daydream. The daydream in the classroom is the only element of the curriculum, that, that, the only element of the classroom that has not been addressed by anybody's curriculum. And yet, the daydream carries all history, all geography all mathematics, everything that in, in, in the travel, the space. And the honor for all of us who sit in the classroom for how many goddamn minutes, um, studying these water stain on the <laughs> ceiling tile, or trying to um, the password is right there in the window. I saw that when I first got here. Um, <laughs> along with the uh, gondolas going up and down the mountain and those wonderful designs of the dust across the space, the pain and the speckles. And it's like, and it's like what I'm doing while the person up front is trying to get across somebody else's information is I'm spending 50 minutes studying the space of the room, the negative space of the topic. What I'm doing is preparing myself to sit with my head bowed over a blank sheet of paper, asking myself, what am I doing here? What am I supposed, in front of a blank canvas, what am I supposed to be doing here? In front of an open, dance, uh, empty dance floor, what am I supposed to be doing here? in front of a musical instrument and trying to figure out what am I supposed to be doing here. Every one of us who have endured a 50 minute classroom day after day has been studying to be an artist. One of my poem fusions, this was, re this was uh, from third graders, uh, lines from how many kids Living inside a mirror, everything is backwards. No one is listening. It's like you're mixed up in a backwards world, walking in the opposite direction. Living inside a mirror is like living in a jar that reflects my future, what I'll be when I grow up, confusing me with the truth. Or is it a lie? So this is a, con con uh, a concoction of different lines from various poets in the third grade. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm sorry, I, did they, comp did the students compose them? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Wow. Well they, they composed their own poems and then they, they took their po lines apart. Yeah, yeah. And so they played. And recomposed. And then recomposed. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, you, when you ask the right questions, I mean, I don't know what, again, I get to get even uh, with my misspent. I didn't misspend my youth <laughs> with my crummy teachers. <laughs> so, so yes, I get in third grade. Um, it's I'm not teaching I'm not teaching children to write children's poetry. I'm I'm teaching children to write poetry, and they get it. They know it. They they know everything. That I, that I'm so, um, so um, so th one of many things I'll be doing. I'll be creating performances, we'll be creating murals, poetry murals, uh, which are really big in Iquique. Um, there's there's uh, poetry murals all over, all over the city, along with their graffiti and their graphics. 
um, I'll be, um, and I'll be working with the poets of the Tarapaka, uh, many of whom are my friends because years ago um, I helped edit a, a book of uh, uh, poets, poets from Pennsylvania, and and poets of the Tarapaka, and then and then I came down here to help launch it. So, so among many things, I'm going to be kicking it up and. Um, I'll let you know. Please, let's get together afterwards because you know I got all the Venezuelans then to work with, who are camped out on the beach and getting burned out and getting clobbered and getting however it is between the locals and the, and the refugees. Um, I've got. To, I want to. I want to find those people too. So. Anyway, yeah, they can't call them refugees because yeah. they'll have to pay for them then. Yeah, so it's for, it's not immigration, it's for getting away. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. Um, as I said to my friends at home, anybody can die in Scranton. <laughs> <laughs> Come find me. <laughs> Come find me. Come find me. <laughs>